right. Um, welcome back to the Pokey Radar Podcast. This is episode 21. Uh, clearly, there's no guests here today. Also, there's nothing in my background. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about today other than um, moving forward, new opportunity, cool things that might be happening, Pokemon, what I'm doing with Pokemon in general now with the new opportunities that have come to fruition finally. Uh, So this is what I'm filming this October 9th, and this will be coming out at the end of the month. So we're pretty far ahead here. I am in the middle of a move. I am moving on again to a new place, a new adventure, a new life, changing my name. Just kidding, not going that far. But I am moving to the great state of Washington, uh, the birthplace of trading cards, where Wizards of the Coast got started, Magic the Gathering, where Pokemon is out there in Bellevue. I have... Accepted a new job, which I have talked about already in multiple podcasts uh, with with TikTok. So TikTok is, of course, like the leading social media platform in the world. They are taking on e-commerce, moving into the world of live shopping, taking on collectibles and everything you can imagine. And I have graciously and thankfully accepted and decided to move out to Seattle, Washington. And uh, I, I'm i so grateful. I'm so excited. I, I said this on the uh, podcast that I joined, um, the Coffee Talk, DJ Gigabyte and, and uh, Dave, David Person, how grateful I am and how shocked I am that I have been put in this position. I'm not doing anything. I'm not at this top position, controlling, pulling. I'm not doing much. I have a pretty low level job, but at the same time, it's at a brand like TikTok, which is just incredible. I never would have thought I'd be here in this position five years now, five years, four years, four years after quitting my first ever full-time job that I got out of college, selling robotic arms, not particularly enjoying my life, to now working at the biggest social media brand in the world under the realm of collectibles and Pokemon cards. It's absolutely ridiculous and the most incredible thing at the same time. So, I mean... For those that have followed my inconsistent journey on social media for the past five, 10 years, um, I originally, and I could probably go back and clip it. I'm not going to because that's too much work to find. My original goal when quitting that nine to five job was to find something in a professional setting that had to do with Pokemon for a full time job. I always wanted and strive to work for myself and build my own Pokemon business. But due to the nature of my life, my health, uh, being a part of a larger corporation working for somebody else is kind of a no brainer necessary decision for me. Um, is as awesome and successful and exciting as my life was for the past few years, few years, hopping from startup to startup, working for myself, doing amazing deals, meeting amazing people. Um, I just have a, a deeper long-term goal slash short-term goal with my life that requires a position like this. And I achieved it four years later, that goal of finding a professional role in a large company setting. This didn't exist four years ago. You couldn't go to even eBay and say, Hey, I want to be the Pokemon guy here. Hire me. No, 
that didn't exist, at least from what I know. It was a fairy tale position of that was muddled, muddied, muddled under the umbrella of sports cards and other collectibles. This job did not exist four years ago. And I had my ups and my downs going from whatnot to myself to fair candy to other things. And uh, I think I positioned myself incredibly well for this to happen. I mean, it seems like it fell in my lap, but at the same time, I put in a lot of work, a lot of effort to get to where I am today. And not only that, (laughs) I mean, I get to move back to the West Coast, which is where I've always wanted to live. Of course, I miss my family and friends out in Michigan, but I've always wanted and enjoyed living on the West Coast. And now the Pacific Northwest, the PNW, one of the most beautiful places on this earth definitely on this, in this country. Um, I can't wait. I'm, I'm so pumped up. I know it doesn't sound like it. I'm usually a pretty calm, cool, collected person, but on the inside, I, I am jittery. I am jumping out of my seat. I cannot wait to go explore and get lost in nature. Um, but yeah, I want to discuss, I guess the my plans, I haven't even thought this out. I haven't planned out this episode to talk. I don't know how long this is going to go for. I haven't planned out what I'm truly going to do with Pokemon as a hobby, side hustle, job. Uh, until right now, I'm going to talk it out live as we speak here on this podcast. What's going through my head, what I'm going to do. Because Pokemon has changed my life as it has changed a lot of your lives that are listening. Um, or just in general collectibles again, right? Uh, it's given you more uh, freedom financially. It's helped you build wealth. It's allowed you to meet new friends, get outside, go to events, do all sorts of things. It's changed our lives. There's no no debating that. And at the same time, the only focus that I've ever had on Pokemon at least on a financial aspect is, is like building a collection and buying and selling and flipping and grading and all this stuff. I've never really taken a look at the industry as a whole and thought about how do we take what was built as a community? How do we, as a community take this industry of trading cards and truly help it, survive and grow like there is one podcast done or episode or something video done um what's his name the uh sports card investor jeff wilson now you can disagree with a lot that he does his investments whatever it's a great marketer but there was a clip of him talking to the burbank shop Burbank cards sports cards shop owner who is the godfather of sports cards of card collecting whatever one of the biggest stores on earth biggest inventories on earth biggest companies reselling companies on eBay giant enormous very important part of the secondary market of collectible cards and he asks him how do we 10x this industry I'm going to get this wrong. You can go back and find this clip, but how do we 10 X this industry? And I've met the Burbank guy once, not really formally, but had a conversation with him on the side with someone else. Um, And you can tell right off the bat how much he cares about the industry itself. I mean, obviously he's incredibly successful now. He doesn't probably, he doesn't have to worry about money anymore, but there's very, very few people that you can just like instinctively tell that this person cares about what's going on around them for either their own legacy purpose or the industry growth purpose and survival, whatever. He's one of them. And his, his response to this question was that all this gambling and money being spent and, you know, 
fanatics coming in, industry money coming in. Um, this gambling stuff is going to take away a lot from the hobby. Not only will it suck the money out, but it's going to deter mom and dad away from letting their kids get involved. I mean, the only reason that Pokemon, that Magic, that Yu-Gi-Oh! sports cards exist, in my eyes, in my opinion, is nostalgia. I mean, if there was no nostalgic feelings, this stuff would not survive. It would never be revisited. It wouldn't be around. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be around long enough for there to be a financial opportunity for other people to come in and exploit it. Really wish I got water for this. So it's about the community. It's about the card shop. It's about the experience, right? And I've been thinking about that a lot and thinking about what needs to change, what needs to be added, what disruption do we need? Who can do it? Why would I do it? Why would they do it? The museum, you know, Jake and Jem Mint talk about it all the time. <clears throat> and I want to figure out how to how to do that, how to take the industry and 10x it. I'm nowhere in a position yet where, you know, this is can be my focus, right? I, I have a lot of financial goals. I need still need to buy a house at some point in my life. I need to, you know, start a family, whatever, and get to a financial freedom point. But in the back of my mind, the thing that's on the top of my side priority list is figure out how to make this industry bigger and better than ever. Who am I going to do it with? What are we going to do? Why are we going to do it? And how? And I think that's kind of where I have fallen into this role that I am excited to take on and need to spend a lot of time and years embracing and learning and experiencing is be kind of a, uh, this is going to sound pretentious, but you know, be, be an industry leader, be a, a, an industry executive, be that guy at TikTok, eBay, Pokemon, wherever to really push forward what we want to see in this industry. I mean, the thing that I have consciously done, not only because I enjoy it, but I feel like I'm good at it. And I feel like it's something that keeps me excited about all this stuff is build relationships. And I've been able to build relationships, strong, real, meaningful relationships with a lot of people. YouTubers now, I mean, this is before they were people, but YouTubers and sellers and buyers, distributors, industry execs, celebrities, collectors, all of these categories of people that intertwine and work together I've been able to really help build the bridge and learn and understand every aspect of these people in this industry. And I hope that I can utilize that, build it into something with this newfound industry experience and growth that I'm going to take on over the next five to 10 years and make an impact, right? I mean, how can we all truly make an impact? And I feel like I want to take on this, again, this sounds so pretentious now that I'm listening to myself, but I want to take on this role and be a valuable asset to the community within the big corporations, right? Uh, I don't have the money to throw around like Fanatics does and buy up things and build something like that, but I can be... I can be that bridge. I can be that voice. I can be that that influence on a greater scale within the industry on behalf of all these different people. That's kind of where I have now set a new goal, like long-term goal. My long-term goal was this, getting this job. And now that I have achieved it, I need to reset 
look at a new goal and that's it. That's what I'm going to do. We got, I'm 30 now. We got a solid 10 years of growing and climbing up this corporate ladder of collectibles in hopes to be able to make a true impact. <coughs> Excuse me. I really should have got water before this. Um, but where was I going before? I was talking about what I'm going to do with Pokemon. Um, it's, that's part of it. That's a big part of it. That's kind of a greater scale long term. What about short term? What am I going to do with my Pokemon cards? What am I going to do with my reselling business? I haven't had anything on eBay in forever. I haven't done live selling in, anywhere in a while. I've done a couple of private sales and buys. But what am I doing on an investing on a business level with Pokemon cards? And I mean, I could talk about where I'm buying right now. I'm buying modern for my distributor. Got to keep that relationship flowing. I'm considering pulling back slightly there. It's a lot of money going out with no money coming in because I just kind of talked about this before. I buy and I don't sell because I don't really have any current uh, avenues to sell, at least at scale, right? Um, I'm buying high end trophy cards where I see opportunity. That's really about it. I'm uh, on the selling side, I'm selling a lot of my built up inventory that I was working towards while at these other startups and wanted to go again back in the full time buying and selling cards. I was building up inventory. So now I'm just kind of selling that stuff. I'm sending stuff to ZNG. My first, uh, I mean, it'll be well over at the point that this comes out, but my very first batch of cards that I sent to ZNG is up for auction right now, which is really cool. I'm excited to see how that turns out. That can make my life easy uh, if I just keep going through him. I I have a huge amount of inventory that I need to grade. I need to inventory so much stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So what am I going to do with Pokemon? I think, again, I really want to embrace this role that I'm taking on uh, and put my all into it. I'm not going any, and then the podcast second is my second priority. So this Pokemon buy, reselling business has fallen to my third priority, which had been my first priority for the last five years or yeah, five years, honestly. So that's kind of tough to, to do my top priority for the past five years. I'm letting fall off to now my third priority, the podcast, which has always been my second priority. Well, in my second interest, Never my second priority. It's now my solidified second priority with the nine to five job as the first, obviously. So that's where my priorities are falling. So my buying and selling days in large quantities and, and looking for plays to grade, 100 copies of this, that, and that, I feel like those are kind of over. Um, maybe not that specifically. I think those are easy plays to make where I can do it quick and sell and be fine. I think the plays of the fun plays of buying large collections, piecing through it, selling off, grading, keeping some. On the other hand, that could be the fun hobby side of things. That's where I really enjoy doing things. So it's like, as far as Pokemon, do I want to focus again, the reselling business, do I want to focus on making money or do I want to use it again as a hobby to enjoy Pokemon? I mean, my, my I know my number one focus on that end is going to be the investing side. I want to speculate, invest in high-end five, six-figure cards. That's where I want to put my money. That's where I'm excited to put my money. That's where, this is not financial advice. That's where I'm excited to put my money. That's where I'm excited to collect. That's where I'm excited for the hunt, for the fun, for the history. That's my main focus for sure, 100%. And again, this is breaking down my third priority in the tiers. Top focus, high end. Trophies. Second, <clears throat> do I want to set, what should my second tier be? Do I want to set collecting goals? Do I want to go for, I have a PSA 9 Shadowless Hollow set. Do I want to do PSA 10? Do I want a first dead base 10 set? Do I want to go after promos? Do I want to do binders? What do I, do I want to set collecting goals? <sighs> Honestly, not really. I've honestly, I've never, I've never really done that. I've always been looking for the best opportunity I could find. I've never set strict goals because I've always felt like that would limit me from 
potential opportunities that landed in my lap, showed up in my face. So I don't think I'm going to do that. However, when it comes to opportunity, which always comes up, I need to figure out how I can take advantage of it and make money or make have the fun going through the collections, right? I still have, I have so much stuff. So I have thousands, 10,000 plus cards that I need to grade just sitting in storage. And I've been sitting there for years, two years, three years. Um, I just got to get through it. I think that's, that's probably the key. I mean, I really see that's the thing. Financial, before I started doing Pokemon, I was super smart with my money. Very frugal. Very, uh, I, I knew where every penny was going. It was incredibly frugal. I just knew where all my money was, where it was going. I had my, my savings goals. Everything was flowing well. And then I went into the hectic world of Pokemon and doing all these crazy things. And I stopped paying attention, which in some cases was a very positive thing for me because it, I didn't waste time. And I don't waste is probably the wrong, wrong, wrong word. I didn't use my time to watch where every dollar went. I used that time to make more money, but I spent it very irresponsibly. To this day, I still spend it very irresponsibly. But now that I'm able to rely on a consistent income, a consistent schedule, fairly consistent, this is not going to be very, very, it's going to be fairly consistent. I can set a routine in my life. I can set up the proper automation tools to achieve my financial savings goals and budget and put my budget goals, right? Which then in turn, I can start to allocate money again into Pokemon specifically instead of just free balling it and hoping for the best. Because right now it's pretty wild. I still spend like I was making money in 2021 with a boom. I still buy, I still spend, I still live that life and then it really cracked back down so this is that opportunity to readjust rebudget set myself back up for true life goals buying that house i'm gonna have to get a new car in the next few years i'm gonna i'm so happy i paid off my car i can't imagine having a car payment at the moment the rent prices in bellevue whew, no thank you yeah so i need to prep for that I want to max out my 401k. Dan, if you're listening, Jake, if you're listening, I hope you guys are happy that I'm talking about this. I want to max out my 401k match. I don't need to max out the 401k. I just want to max the company match, right? And then I want to set up other investment goals that are more liquid. Obviously, 401k, you can't touch till you retire, but I want to set up more liquid accounts that will allow me to earn money while just sitting there instead of waiting for the next Pokemon collection to buy. I mean, the amount of money that at times that I've had sit in a 0% checkings account because I'm waiting for the next Pokemon purchase, pretty idiotic to the regular person, I guess, right? I mean, that's the name of the game when it comes to cards. You need cash. Cash is king. You need it readily available at an instant sometimes to make that purchase. Throw it on a table and make a deal happen. But at the same time, there's so many smarter things you can do by just being patient and doing life the right way. (laughs) I guess the right way, the traditional way. Uh, So I figured that's kind of where my head's going to be at. I'm going to, again, tier one, priority one, nine to five. Priority two, consistency with the podcast, growing the podcast. I really want to get sponsors. I want the podcast to become something financially worth it as well as the enjoyment I get out of it because then I can get a studio. I could get a studio. I could fly people out. I would, I would, I would waste every dollar that my podcast made into making it better. And by way, again, I'm using this word waste a lot. I would invest every dollar that my podcast made into making it better, getting a separate studio or renting a studio, flying out guests to have them in person and have these chats because it would just make it so much better. So that's a goal of mine. 2024, sponsor, sponsor, sponsors. 
Got to figure that out. I know how to do it. But it's not doing it because I'm so unsettled. I want... That's the other thing. This podcast... Let's talk about this podcast and where it's going to go. And how I'm going to grow it. Number one, continued guests, con- con- continued consistency. I have a huge list of guests that I still need to get through. Some of them are actually like professional podcasters. Um, I'm just going to call you out. Jarvis, dude, got to get you on. Uh, I have so many questions. I need I need your help. <laughs> uh, it, but I also just want to hang out and talk Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff with you. Um, Pokemon Go, I guess. Uh, number two, did I start with number one? Where are we? Yeah, consistency. Number two, uh, again, I need to, and I know I've left some people hanging because I made this post a month ago. I've had people, I had people helping me out. You know who you are. I'm very sorry for not getting back to you and all that, but I need help with the podcast. I don't need a expensive editor. I don't need these podcasts flared up. I think they are what they are. The quality is fine. The conversations are great. Maybe I could add something here and there, but I don't need, I'm sick. I don't need a high cost editor. I need like an assistant. I need somebody who will post the clips, the, the reels, the shorts, the TikToks daily for me, or at least prep them for me. Because when it comes down to the tedious work of of uh, timestamps, I need someone to do timestamps for me. And then I can just, once I have timestamps, I can clip those out super quick, throw them up on YouTube. I just need someone to write the descriptions, the titles, plan it, schedule it, all that. I would, that tedious amount of work, it's not even that much work. It's just tedious for me. And at the time when I'm done with recording, done with rendering all this stuff, it's just so tedious. Again, it doesn't take that long. It's just so tedious that I don't want to do it. And I've tried to save myself from burnout. So I stopped doing those clips and reels and stuff while I've been transitioning into this new position uh, on this move and all that. Thankfully, I've kept the podcast going every week, which is the most important thing. But I want to, again, uh, uh, vamp up daily clips, daily reels, daily shorts, TikToks. And... Because that will help grow the channel. I mean, I, you know, I hit a viral clip, hopefully, and it helps bring in new viewers. So that's another thing. I need to find an assistant, I think. I don't know. I need to figure that one out still. Uh, I'm so bad at hiring and having a... Being responsible for somebody's income. I don't know. I've always been scared to hire people for the card business, mostly because I don't trust people with my cards and... I don't want the wrong thing shipped out. And one thing wrong leads to a person thinking you're a scammer. So I've always been against hiring people for the card business. <coughs> so sorry for coughing and all these pauses. But yeah, I need to get the podcast really booming. I love this thing, man. I mean, I've got solo ones going. I've got great guests. I'm going to bring in some groups. I'm going to do some multi-guest episodes. Uh, I don't know if I'll do live. I might do live eventually. People really want the live. I don't know if I want to do live though. It kind of takes away from the conversation that I'm having with the person. You know, there's a, as much as I love chat and interacting with people, it's just like, I want to focus on this conversation one-on-one and put it out there for the world to listen to. I think that's, I'm going to keep it up. No lives. I'm not doing lives. Do I want to keep premieres? I battled with this. Do I want to keep doing premieres? I don't know. That's a question that I had for my podcast friends, but we'll see. And then, yeah. And then the card business, um, you know, it's just going to kind of, it is what it is. The card business, I'll probably consign stuff. I don't, I, won't, I don't think I'll do much personal selling. I'll do private deals for big stuff, but all the ticky tech. It's just going to go to Z&G, it'll go to TCA, it'll go to whoever. Um, just because I won't really want to spend too much time on that and focus on that. I need to I need to delegate that workload to someone else. Uh, and even though it's going to take away from the profits, as long as I make money, I'm happy. So 
that's what's going to happen there. But yeah, I hope that again, this is going to be cutting it close with my move. I'm going to have to find a guest super quick. Hopefully my internet works. I'm going to lose my fiber optic connection, which is a shame. I figured they would have that everywhere riddled in Bellevue and Seattle, but I guess not. And, uh, I need to find a guest ASAP. Otherwise, you're going to be hearing a second solo podcast back to back, which I know we don't want. I need water so bad. I'll be right back. See, this is a problem. I need Mountain Valley Spring to sponsor the podcast. So I have water ready to go right next to me at all times. I'm drinking out of a... One day. One day. It'll happen. But yeah, where was I? Podcast stuff. Um, the other thing I want to do expanding on guests is get into the industry leaders, today's industry leaders, you know, talk to those who have been around for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years that have essentially created, built and grown the industry as it is, not just collectors and influencers that you all know, who are the people behind the scenes that built this thing. I want to learn. I want to teach the world about the trading card history, the trading card game, the trading card industry. How did it come to be? What happened in this era, that era? I'm so out of breath. I'm so sick. Um, And yeah, I want to make that a very big portion of my podcast. I've kind of always mentioned this where I have one side of the podcast, which is friends and fun and bullshitting. And then the other half is informative, interesting, and maybe even a little bit bizarre with people outside of the industry. Completely, I don't know. Get some eccentric art collectors talking about crazy stuff. I don't know. But yeah, so that's really kind of the gist of it. You know, that's what's happening in my life right now. A lot of things have been moving. Uh, This is going to be a short podcast because that's just the nature of doing a solo podcast without preparing. But I think that and hope that this was informative for you guys who are watching, gave you a little bit of updates, but maybe even a little bit of inspiration to do something greater than just buy and sell cards, do something for the industry that could have some impact for the next generation. We are the next generation. Maybe. I don't know. How yeah, probably. So thank you guys. I'm just gonna end it here. I got nothing else to say. Thank you guys for all the support, all the love. I hope my move my move goes smoothly so that we can be back up and running with our regular program program. Uh with a new guest and more interesting stories. Uh very soon. So thank you guys again probably going to leave that big gap in there where I went and got water so hopefully you still listen through it but this is a short one my shortest one yet uh so again thank you guys so much love you all and I will see you soon